you don't really have to know underlying mechanisms in the economy because the prices reflect the underlying mechanisms. In fact, you fit the deep model, if there is one, by looking at the surface and then inferring what the depth deep model must be. That's literally how students are trained. So they're not trained to be skeptical. They're trained to fill in parameters of a system which assumes from the start that what you see on the surface is what you really have. Whereas what fundamental proper skepticism of the Popperian sort that George Soros was trained in, and also what the logic of economic bubbles shows, and what the logic of biophysical bubbles show, is what you see on the surface can completely hide and obscure what's happening below, and that it's our job as scientists, and I would say as responsible citizens, to understand the deep points and therefore help to rectify the discrepancies and keep ourselves away from trouble. Thanks. Gentlemen, thank you very much for that. If, if I could just ask you to, George, if you could just pull your microphone in front of you, Nouriel as well, and, and Jeff, and we'll just, we'll take a few minutes here. We're running uh, sort of behind, a little bit behind schedule, but we want to open up uh, the floor to questions as well. But just a couple of discussion points. Um, you know, we talked a lot about how we got here. Maybe we could take a few minutes to talk about where we're going. And there's this, you know, if I read you correctly, the worst seems to be, have been averted, at least for the moment. And then there's this intersection that we talk about between Wall Street and Main Street. And Nouriel, you alluded to this, saying that we could be in for an 18 to 24 month recession. George, let me start by asking you, how bad, George, if I could start with you, how bad do you think things will get in the next 18 to 24 months, not on Wall Street, but on Main Street? Well, I wouldn't, uh, it would be co totally contrary to my theory to make a prediction because that will entirely depend on how we react to what's happening. In other words, the future will be determined by future actions, and particularly by the next president, mm -hmm. I would say. And uh, I can see two totally different uh, paths, depending <laughs> who is the president, uh, among other things. But that's not the only. In other words, the range of, possibility, right, of possibilities right now is very wide. So you, you certainly cannot avoid a serious downturn over the next uh, 18 months, let's say. But whether it's going to be, uh, you know, something like what we had in, in, in Japan, 10 years, or, or whether you will have actually a collapse of the entire uh, uh, world economy, depends on how people react to it. Now, I think we have learned something from the 30s, we, have, uh, we are not going to let the system collapse. So we are not going to have a replay of the 30s. I think we have to deal with the housing problem, the danger that housing prices will overshoot on the downside, as they did on the upside. It's an unsolved problem. And then there is this question of international cooperation to prevent the... the uh, uh, the crisis at the center to d destroy the economies at, at the periphery. Those are the two unresolved problems. How we resolve them uh, will uh, tell us. You know, Nouriel, you talk to anybody in business, they're, they're thinking that the end of, uh, of the fourth quarter will be terrible. They're thinking that the first quarter of next year will be even worse. You've said that uh, you think that unemployment in this country, currently running about 6.1%, could hit 9%. What, what do you foresee? I mean, George, George says you can't predict the future because you have to look at where we're going in terms of every reaction to it, but, but you seem to have a, a pretty good uh, eye for uh, prognostication. Where do you see this going? Um, I certainly agree with George that uh, how deep the recession is going to be depends in part on our policy response. Certainly right now we have made sure there is a backstop of the financial system, but there is much more needs to be done, you know, 
Right now we're in a situation in which uh, consumption is 70% of the men was already in free fall before the latest shocks. And our number came out on September saying there was a really in free fall. If you are a firm and you decide whether to do any capex spending for next year, given the uncertainty, leaving aside even the credit crunch, you're going to stop investing. And therefore, I think that there's going to be a fear of a self-fulfilling recession that becomes deeper because consumers don't spend and the firms are not doing capital spending. And if the private sector is not going to spend enough consumption investment, we need the government spending. That's why I think it's going to be important to have a second fiscal stimulus package, investing in infrastructures, mm -hmm. into maybe new technology, alternative energy, giving money to the state and local government that are strapped, increasing unemployment benefits, and things of that sort are going to boost demand. Otherwise, we might be in a situation in which we think we're fixing the financial system, but if the economy is going to end up into a free fall six months from now, the collateral damage to the financial system is going to be huge because collapse, delinquencies, defaults are going to rise, and therefore the fall of Main Street is going to feed back back to the Wall Street. So yeah. I think the policy response is crucial. And in this context, in addition to fiscal policy, I think you have to have also over time a reduction of that burden of the household sector. You have some fraction of the household sector that is credit cards, auto loans, student loans, mortgage debt is not sustainable. When a country has too much debt, they default, say Russia, Argentina, Ecuador, they reduce the debt value, and then they start growing again. Where a corporation has too much debt, you go into Chapter 11, you reduce the debt level, you start spending, hiring, and producing again. Same thing is happening right now with the household sector. There is a debt overhang, and that's the reason why consumers cannot spend, because they don't have money to spend. They're cutting back on consumption. I think the key element of the policy response is going to be, over time, a significant reduction of that burden of the housing sector. Uh, Jeff, George mentioned uh, a moment ago, and he has written extensively on this, the, the importance of making sure that the housing bubble does not overshoot on the downside the way it overshot on the, uh, on the upside. How important is it, both economically and from a societal perspective as well, to slow down the rate of foreclosures. I mean, so many people are losing their homes these days. I think that all of these things are important, but I also do not believe uh, that uh, we should uh, do everything uh, desperately that we can to try to stop a recession. Uh, I think that that idea is a little bit what has gotten us into this crisis in the first place. There's a basic concept, uh, used to be a concept in economics called instrument instability, which means that if you target something that you can't really control and you aggressively target it, you're turning the dial ever more wildly to try to keep that non-targetable uh, event under your control. Greenspan exemplified, in my view, instrument instability. Interest rates soared, then they came down, then they soared. Why? Because a cyclical economy has cycles. And the idea that we can control the cycles and stop recessions is, in my view, an exaggeration of our capacity in uh, macroeconomic control. What we must do is stop a collapse of the financial system, for example, what's underway right now. I don't think we can stop a recession because, as I described, this is the results of many, many years of massive uh, overborrowing by government and by households, and uh, we're building in the wrong place. The idea that the goal is to put that housing construction back where it was because that's where the workers are. Is in my nevertheless, nevertheless. Uh, but let me just uh, sorry, just just to finish because I want to mention one more thing. It's not in contradiction, but I think it's it's important and profoundly unpopular, uh, and that is that um, one of the things being talked about right now is another tax cut. Of course, this is uh, both candidates have this McCain to a point that's so profoundly reckless it's unreal. It's just unbelievable uh, that you would tax, you cut taxes of the rich in, in uh, every context, social, political, economic, that we live. It's mind-boggling. But Senator Obama also has a tax cut uh, on uh, the agenda as well. This, to me, is part of our ideological bubble. The idea that we don't pay taxes, 
because we don't need government. 